Hi everyone, I'm Xue Yanlin from Taiwan. I'm the re-architect of Pilis, and I'm really glad to be here today to share with you the story of Taiwan, the story of reinventing democracy. As citizens, I believe we should all have a say on where we go as a society, and that is happening in Taiwan. I want to share with the story of how a group of citizens kick-started the redesign of a decrepit tax reporting system of Taiwanese government. During the tax reporting season earlier this year, um, a U.S. designer, Chen Chou, wrote an e-petition. He said, we have an explosively user-hostile tax reporting system, and the PO brought it to PO network. The PO, or Participation Officer of Ministry of Finance, Ching Han Yang, brought this case to one of the monthly meetings of PO network. Every month, the POs would bring topics they feel needed to be discussed with the network at once instead of waiting for 5,000 people to countersign and 60 days to reply. There's no hierarchy in PO network and all the POs are fully authorized to work on whatever they feel needed for open government. We call this culture a hypocrisy. This new hypocrisy culture that the new digital minister brought into the central government gave civil servants more opportunity and time and space to iterate on the process and look for a better solution. So they will have time and space and chances to organize events or activities such as collaboration workshop with as many stakeholders as possible. In this case, the US designers were also invited to give a presentation followed by another idea development session with the entire process live stream over the internet. Eventually, uh, the PO reached out and asked for more help from the society. They invited um, a stakeholder group that is as dynamic as possible, and not only listening to their ideas and thoughts, but also they invite them to co-create the next year's tax reporting system. The participants in the co-creation workshop include civil servants who are good at tax and law, uh, designers, facilitators, uh, workshop conductors, who were there to make sure the process went smoothly. The representatives from the IT company, the citizens were there to give their precious advice and experiences, and also the PO who were in the center of all conversations. The process has been great, and the result just has been, happened to be amazing. They all think together, work together, and came up with a new design proposal that introduced a more friendly user flow and a straightforward guidance. So how did this happen? I want to rewind back a little bit to three years ago in um, about a movement that rides on years of involvement of par public participation in Taiwan. Public participation in Taiwan has been developed in several formats from face-to-face, -face, radio broadcast, telephone calling, TV debate, to deliberation over the internet. This trajectory coincides with the advancement of technology we sensed. New technology arrived. Democracy evolved. Three years ago, writing on the era of self-media, when digital natives wouldn't hesitate to become YouTubers to share selfies or find videos over their social media platform, the Soundflower movement took place. Students in Taiwan wouldn't bear with the MPs unwillingness to deliberate about a service trade deal with the Beijing office. So that the students they occupied the parliament for 22 days and conducted a real deliberation with the entire process also live streamed over the internet. This led to the launch of Taiwan as an experiment that prototypes an open consultation process for the civil society. So after the Sunflower movement, the government didn't go back and sit in their silos. The former Minister of Cyberspace, Jacqueline Tsai, went to one of the hackathons organized by GovZero, the largest civic tech community in Taiwan, and she proposed to have a platform that allows the entire society to engage in rational uh, discussion. People in the hackathon took the challenge and that was the start of Taiwan. Taiwan takes shape into a platform and a consultation process for the civil society, including governmental officials and civil servants, to come together and deliberate on public policies. It has various touch points, such as a website uh, with a lot of, lot of topics to go through, 
and the combination of meetings and hackathons along with the consultation process. Today, three years after the launch of eTaiwan, we like to take a moment to review and report on what worked and what didn't. We're also re rephrasing the big question we ask ourselves to address new challenge for later to take on. The first insight is each case is different and should be treated differently. You see, cases on Taiwan often go through several sessions in their process, from online opinion collection, face-to-face -face consultation meeting, collaborative build drafting, and finally, build delivery. But there's no curial process. It's impossible to conclude a working framework for all cases. Instead, the cases often go through a combination of sessions provided how the community could facilitate. Each case is different, and we are open to let the process serve each of them. One of the most asked questions in the Taiwan Hackathon is what's next? What is the next session to take for this case? And as the amount of cases increase in the V Taiwan process, <coughs> in the V Taiwan platform, it is in extremely important for us to be aware uh, of that. We ha we need to keep um, every decision we made as transparent as possible. So our next challenge will be how do we um, keep the decision made as transparent as possible. The second insight will be participants are always different and that is good. Vitamin attracts groups of stakeholders by cases. Taxi drivers can discuss on Vitamin platform when Uber case was on. Drone vendors can when new regulation of unmanned aviation vehicle case was under debate. If you come to the hackathon, come to the Vitamin hackathon once in a couple of months, maybe, you will see uh, an entirely different group of people discussing various of cases, operating the platform, maintaining the code, solving issues. The only thing really doesn't change is that you will always find coke and chips. We enjoy work with people, we enjoy work with everyone and learn from everyone. So we are always looking for tips to attract more people, especially those uh, with skill sets that is expanding the group dynamic. So our next challenge is how might we expand the group dynamic? And third insight would be V Taiwan started as an experiment and remained as an experiment. V Taiwan started from experimenting open multi-stakeholder governance model. We approached this goal with fellowship model where mediators plays a key role in catalyzing conversations. This model was proven to be feasible, however, um, oftentimes after the mediators left the government and returned to their private sectors, there, the peer-to-peer the -peer connection between ministries also began disappearing. So we started wondering if there's a way to institutionalize this model. If we try to copy all the questions we have so far, it's not difficult to find some takeaway actions already. So for example, how do we decide each step as transparent as possible? Radical transparency. How might we expand the group dynamic? Be cool with empathy. Not only preparing um, cokes and chips in Vitamin hackathons, but also prepare some orange juice and chocolate milk, for example, in case people want it. And when thinking about how to institutionalize this model, it's important to be aware that more binding power could also mean less freedom. So how might we on one hand regulate the necessity of participation and collaboration, while on the other hand remain this freedom to experiment, so that the government remains the commitment to participate and collaborate but not predominate, and we Taiwan could responds fast enough to new challenges, to improvise, and to find creative solutions. In the end, we just need to keep experiment. So to close this talk, I want to share the three most recent experiments we have to make the process more inclusive, more intriguing, and more infectious. Two months ago, we launched a project, an open project called Holopolis. It's an open project that welcomes everybody to participate even over uh, the internet, that is asking how to make Vitaon better and 
um, with the new or existing technologies. We had a special focus on Polis, this AI-powered free software, and it's really free now, so let's go ahead and experiment more. The first experiment we have is Holopolis Bot. It allows an always available participation. Um, by packaging with Taiwan as a contact, you can add friends with, um, for example, Slack or Skype. Um, and you can share your opinions on cases under discussion on the Taiwan platform. The second experiment, Holopolis MR. Um, it imagines an, a near future when MR headsets are more popularized. It turns on the GPS with computer vision so that the users can bump into virtual public forums, such as a forum set up next to um, the priority seats, uh, such as in this picture here. The Holopost Hi-Fi uses high fidelity platform and creates a virtual commons that imagines in the far future we can all connect to and immerse in public policy deliberation, which could be handy for cross country um, uh, for issues cross country borders or for international issues. Such are the questions we ask from the uh, beginning of this talk: where we go as a society. Thank you.